Hi, this is Dr. Nurse. This is my second video of Boost on November the 14th, 2010. I have a worksheet for you to do tomorrow. And the worksheet, now remember, when you go to class, you're going to first have a quiz. The quiz is on assets and bases. I will be in my chat room tonight at 10 o'clock. I will not be in school tomorrow because I have a meeting downtown, okay? It's very unusual, and I very rarely miss school. Tuesday, I'll be there all day. Okay, so if you have questions, you can come in on Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll have normal class. But tomorrow, during class, you're going to have um, sort of a problem set to do. And a lot of the problem set is addition reactions to double bonds. And they do, they do get a little more advanced. So I'm just preparing you, particularly the second lecture, because we didn't get quite as far, because we started talking about kinetics and thermodynamics. But anyway, one of the things I want you aware of is that carbocations rearrange. Okay, so if I had this molecule and I was adding HBr, okay, the double bond would reach out and grab the H, kicking out the bromide, resulting in what we would call the Markovnikov product, which looks like this. And we discussed this in great detail on Friday as to why, well, we discussed the stability of cations. So, the secondary cation is more stable than the primary, so you would get this. Now, in the second group, what we didn't discuss are rearrangements. And I told you in class that cations are much more desperate than radicals. And we said this is because a cation is missing one more electron than a radical. A thing that cations do that radions, <laughs> radions, that radicals don't do is cations rearrange. And a rear what a rearrangement is a desperate move to get electrons, okay? So what this cation does, and this cation here is like a vacant p orbital, okay? And I don't like to say vacant p orbital, and there are people who know why I don't like to say that, because an orbital is a region of probability of finding electrons, so if you have no electrons, what, what is the meaning of that orbital? But this, this void, or this place that's missing charge, will actually grab a sigma bond and its associated atom from a neighboring atom and kind of like suck it into its void and create a new void on the other atom. And this will look like this. So what this is called here is a hydride shift. Okay? So what happened here was this carbon was so deficient in, in charge, its orbital here overlapped with the sigma orbital and actually pulled the electron density in and there, at the, there was a movement of an H minus. And when the H minus moved over to this carbon, that left, left the plus charge here. Now what's the advantage of this? This is a tertiary cation. So you can think a little bit about what is the advantage of a tertiary cation. The advantage of a tertiary cation is that it is more stable than a secondary. So what the molecule is trying to do is stabilize itself. Now ultimately, as I told you in class, a carbocation is not going to sit around looking at, a, at an anion. Um, they are going to react with each other. So you do get product from the rearrangement. And I did put a couple rearrangements into your um, problem set. If you can do them, it's okay. If you can't, the world isn't going to end. All right, so what I did was I added the hydrogen in a Markovnikov manner to form a secondary cation at that site. But the cation pulled the electron density from the tertiary site to form a tertiary cation, and then the bromide added, and we get what's called a rearranged product. In other words, the bromide isn't where you would have originally predicted. Now, in class on Tuesday, I'm going to on Wednesday rather, I'm going to show you how to do this very systematically. So be aware... You could also have, just to show you one more thing, so you're ready. I want you to get as much done as you can tomorrow. Okay, be aware. You know, similarly, you can have something like this. Okay? Now, if you have this, and I add HCl, say, it would work the same way. You take the electrons, sweep them out, grab the H. You're going to want to add the H so that you get the secondary cation and not the primary cation. On Tuesday, we're going to explain why that's so. I'm going to give some theory for it. Then, again, this desperate cation is going to pull one of the bonds from its neighbor. But notice, this is not 
a tertiary cation. This is a quaternary cation. So what happens with a quaternary is that you have an alkyl group shift over. So this whole group shifts over with its electrons and forms this structure. Like that. Okay. And so what happened here? This is what you call an alkyl shift. Remember, this is due to the desperation of this cation. There's sort of like a vacant orbital here. And this orbital just slides over with its electrons. The alkyl shift involves a methyl and its associated pair of electrons. But it doesn't have to be a methyl. It could be an ethyl. You'll see. It could be other things. Now, when this cation forms, again, the chloride will jump in there and bond. And we would get at least some of, maybe not all of this. We would also get some of this. We get some of this product, but we'd also expect to see some of this product from the rearrangement. Again, on Wednesday, I will discuss this in more detail. Have a good night.